Hello everybody. The project we're tackling today is a jacket using a resist. It's taken from um, Felting Fashions by Lizzie Houghton. That's where we yeah, the template. borrowed the template from, but the process will be a little bit of hers and a little bit of ours. Jones cut up some silk saris over there and giving them a bit of a wash and an iron, a gentle wash and an iron. The template is 2.7 metres by 1.4 metres and we're going to lay up the back of the jacket to start with by covering it with sari silk with an overlap of about 3 or 4 inches from the edge of the template. It'll overlap all the way around except the collar and the bottom which won't overlap. And the arms. Well, the, and the arm edges, the yeah, edge. the arm holes won't overlap. So we're going to uh, lay up the fabric and we'll catch up with you in a minute. Before we continue, we'd like to share three deliberate decisions that made this piece as difficult as possible to roll and one major cock-up that we wouldn't recommend our viewers try. First was the choice of old sari silks for Nuno. Silk sari has a much tighter weave than silk georgette or cotton muslin and gauze or the purpose built for Nuno silk mesh. As such, migrating the fibres through the multiple layers of sari silk can be rather a challenge. Second, in Liz Houghton's book Felting Fashion, she recommends sewing the fabric pieces together so they don't move. However, we left the pieces loose and slightly overlapped trusting that they wouldn't move too much in the gentle roller. Third, placing the sari pieces first on the resist with the wool laid on top makes it impossible to check until the resist is taken out. Finally, we made a very bad choice for a resist. PVC pool liner is not a suitable resist as it has no give. An ideal resist should be pliable and roll easily. Well, here we are with our back uh, laid with fabric? Surrey silk fabric. Looks like a kimono. Looks pretty interesting. <laughs> and Joan's going to wet the fabric down so it doesn't move. It's a little bit more stable. And then lay on the wool. Lay on the wool. Lay on the wool. What wool are we using? Um, short hair, super fine merino. Right. In a matching colourway. I've okay. chosen the fabric to match to match the wall. So. Alright, so we'll come back when we've done the layup. When on Jane's the back. done the layup. When I've done the layup on the back. Alright, thank you. Okay. The garment was begun from the back, laying sari pieces and overlapping the resist by around five centimetres. Then two very fine layers of short hair super fine merino were laid on the fabric pieces, overlapping the resist by only two centimetres thus leaving some fabric exposed. The whole piece was wet down and covered with painter's drop sheet. Air bubbles were gently pressed out and the surface rubbed to ensure that it is thoroughly wet through. The piece was rolled onto a pool noodle and unrolled onto the other side, not flipped, so that the fronts could be laid. The siren wool that had overlapped the resist was carefully folded onto the front of the resist. The right side was laid with sari pieces and merino first extending the sari and wool beyond the centre of the neckline 7 to 8 centimetres. Then it was wet down and covered with painter's plastic and the left side of the jacket was laid with sari and merino. This side was also laid with an overlap of 7 to 8 centimetres to create a lapel. In total a 15 centimetre overlap was created. Then the left side was also wetted down, gently pressed to release air bubbles and rubbed to ensure thorough wetting. Edges were pushed against the resist to ensure a ridge doesn't form where the back meets the front. To fit such a large piece on the gentle roller, the larger 1400mm was used. The sleeves were folded in and it was carefully taken up on the drive roller.
The bundle was rolled a set number of cycles, then it was opened. Any creases caused by the folding were massaged out, and the edges were pushed against the resist, before refolding and rolling again. Different types of folds were used, but the folding, rolling, rubbing pattern was repeated until the fabric was secure enough to be taken off the PVC resist. Once off the resist, it was noticed that a few sari pieces had moved and created thin spots which were patched up before painted strop sheet was put inside the garment to replace the hard resist and stop the two sides and sleeves from folding together. Again, different folds were used and the garment was taken up in various directions to ensure it folded evenly. Eventually, when the prefold was stable enough, all the plastic was removed and the garment was rolled in between towels to remove the excess moisture before being line dried. I wanted it dry for a thorough inspection. Everything seemed okay, so after a quick modelling of the prefold, it was then wetted down again for some further cycles of rolling. All the inner plastic resists were taken out before fulling began although the garment was kept supported by the outer plastic sheeting for its initial tumbles in the rumbler or fulling drum. The pre-felt was bundled concertina style. Every 150 tumbles it was taken out, inspected, edges were checked, the whole piece was kept wet and soaked. The lapel edges were hand rolled to ensure they were even. Those hand touches and finishes that differentiate good quality felt from ordinary felt are not relinquished. And like magic, the jacket had shrunk to 25% of the original surface area. The finished jacket is wondrously soft, yet warm and finely textured.